Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight is night 13 of my nightly commitment to record one coding bot solution as long as schools are closed. Um, and tonight we're going to look at string times and warm up to, and this is specifically the Java implementation. This is a wonderful problem to kind of start to experiment with loops, and I'm going to do this with three different types of loops. I'm going to do it with a for loop, a while loop, and a do while loop. And I can't stress enough to go out and practice these afterwards if you're developing your understanding of coding because these loops are really fundamental and if you're comfortable with them you can do all sorts of stuff. All right, let's read the problem. Given a string and a non-negative int n return a larger string that is n copies of the original string. In the example we see hi2 gives me, notice that hi twice, hi3 gives me hi three times, and hi1 gives me hi once. So like I said at the start of this, um, and I'm not going to go into a lot of theory on this. I have a couple of videos about this. I can strings at all. Loops. Um, there are two broad classifications. We have what are called counted loops. And those are for loops. And we have what are called conditional loops. And in Java in particular, we have what's called a while loop and a do while loop. Now, loops are, all of these loops are completely interchangeable. It's just slightly different notation. But one of the things I do stress to students is that these loops will be, will make, picking the right loop in a certain situation, or not the right, picking a specific loop will simplify your code. Uh, and I'm not going to get into that now, but I want you to always think about which loop you choose and think about why. All right. Let's start with doing this using a for loop. So we're going to use this idea of string construction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a string called TSTR. And I'm going to start off with that being an empty string. And what I want the code to do is I want to loop a number of times and just continually add on that str over and over again. Before we do that, let me just do this. tstr is equal to str plus str plus str. Turn t str. If I run this, you can see I get this, I get it correct with the situation when we have n is 3, and I get it correct here, and that's because it's an empty string, and I can add an empty string as many times as I want. So what I need is a structure that will run a code block the number of times I want to. And that's where for loop comes in. And the for loop has this structure, for int, and you can make this any variable you want. I'm going to say i, and this is what I refer to as a count. i is our count variable. It's like, imagine you're asked to keep track of how many times you do something, and you hold your hand up, and every time you do it, you raise, you raise one finger, and then you check to see how many times you've done it. The next part is what's called the check. So I want to go as long as i is less than n. And so this is the idea of I've said to someone, okay, I want you to count off five times. So you, so you hold your hand up, and then you, you look, you have zero fingers up, and then you raise one finger, then you check. Is that less than five? No. Another finger, is that less than five? And you continue until you reach five. And the third part is a change. So I'm going to say i is equal to i plus one. Now, what I like about Java compared to Python is that Java, you can play, all, play around with this. You can do i is equal to i times 10, i is equal to i plus four. You can put whatever you want there. All this does is it tells you how to change that variable at the end of the loop. And so a number of years ago, a student referred to it as this, and it's kind of stuck. I think about what's called count, let's do it this way, four, and we talk about the count, the check, and the change. Um, and so when we first reach the loop, I get set to zero, and then if this is true, it enters the loop. And so what do we want to do inside the loop? Well, what we want to do is we want to add to that tstr, which is right here, we want to add the string one time. So I'm going to say tstr is equal to tstr plus str. And now, of course, I don't want this line anymore. And if I run it, there it is. Because what's happening is this loop is going to run the loop will run n times. All right, let's look at the second solution. I want to acknowledge how fast this is. Um, and if you are just learning how to use loops, I do recommend you either grab one of my videos or someone else's out there and practice with them. Um, OK, next way is to do it with a while loop. So you could do this with a while loop simply, simply by taking these parts and pulling them out of this generic loop structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an integer i and set it to 0. So notice, just like the for loop, I have this i, but it's it's set as a variable. I'm going to make a string called tstr again, make that empty string. Let's put a whole 
bunch of space here just to kind of come up with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write while, and I'm going to say while i is less than n. And then I do tstr is equal to tstr plus str. So it's the exact same piece of code, but the difference is, notice, with the for loop I have my, my count, which is those pair. This is my check, which is the same thing as this here. But where's the change? Well, the change has to happen right inside here, so I say i is equal to i plus 1. And then I return tstr. I run that. I always forget no semicolons. Too much Python. Again, there we go. So a while loop and a for loop are actually the, the same idea. It's just a while loop is like a deconstructed for loop. We've broken out those parts and separated them. A while loop works just like an if statement, except for it can repeat. So whereas if this was an if statement, so let's just put the word if here, it would reach this point of the code and it would say, if this is true, run the code. And if it's false, skip it. The difference is when I put while here, it checks the if statement, but when it gets to the bottom, it checks condition again. If it's true, it repeats code. If it's false, it continues. Now, my last solution I'm going to do here, I'm going to use something called a do while loop. And this is a, again, another fun little loop structure. But what it does is it just, a do while loop is useful when you know it has to run once. Because technically this while loop could stick once. Could, 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 could skip it altogether. Pardon me. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set i equal to 0 here, and I'm going to make this tstr. Remember to put variables in front of it. String tstr is equal to empty string. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write this thing called a do while. So I'm going to say do, open a brace. And the difference is I put the while condition here. I'm going to say while i is less than n. And I'm going to actually just copy this exact same code and put it in here. Let's see what happens. And I'm going to return tstr. I hit go. And it's kind of right, but not quite right. So let's talk about what's happening now. So the difference between a while loop and a do while loop is a do while loop will always run once. So notice with the while loop, we hit the while loop, and then if this is false, it skips it. But a do while loop only checks the condition at the end. So when I reach this, it doesn't check anything. It just runs it once. And then when it gets to the bottom, it can go back up to the top. So we have this problem here when we have zero times, and the string has a value because it's going to add high to it once. So what I have to do in this case is I have to do something like, I have to add some if statement up here to account for that. So I'm going to say if n is equivalent to 0, we're just going to return, we're going to return an empty string. And if I run that now, that solves this problem. So as you can see, the, the do while loops a little bit, you know, requires a little bit more finessing to work. So I hope this video helped, and I'm sure if you're just learning loops, this feels kind of quick. But I really want to stress the point is just making some simple programs and practicing these loop structures is really important. And thinking about why you chose one loop over the other is really useful. And if you really can master these, you're going to become a phenomenal programmer um, in terms of algorithm development. I hope this video helped. Have a great day.